Tapping at Terry's here back with another video with we are playing Stormbound today and I've already gone through the first tutorial. I've played this game before, but this is the first time really doing it on stream, and so we're gonna go ahead and dive in here. We're on we went through the first tutorial. Second tutorial, we'll go ahead and dive in there. It's a fairly straightforward game. It's uh you're you're trying to destroy the opponent's base. But where it gets more interesting is that you have energy. So you can see over here you got you got your uh, little gems over there, kind of like a mana system. And then your cards in your deck give you um, the amount of resources it takes, so mana. And then they have the number of people and the speed, right? And so those are kind of like the two base resources that you have on them. And then you also have these spell cards. So it just told me to use that execution ability, right, to to make sure that I'm able to kill those enemy units because I only got a one cost guy out there. And now they're gonna drop their person over here. And I have five, so I'm gonna go ahead and place this guy here and it's gonna charge and attack them. And you can see when they do combat, like I reduce the number of people they have by the number of folks I have. They do one-on-one -on -one combat type of thing. So that one looks like it just kind of defends. I don't see much else over there. This spell does one damage to enemy units and structures, so there are structure cards later on. I could do this. I'm not sure. Yeah, let's go ahead and do that for right now. I think the tutorial wants me to do that. So I'm going to do four points of damage. I'll lose all those guys, I think. Okay, so you can attack things in the same line to defend. So that's kind of interesting. So yeah, I did two damage that turn. And you can see I can actually place units further up because of how far my territory is. Right? And they can only place things on their front line. So when you place a unit in a charge or attack essentially, if they've got movement, you can see what the movement looks like. And you can also, I think at the beginning of your turn, all your units move up by the number of spaces. So there's two movement or attack phases essentially. One at the beginning of your turn and then one after you play a unit. So personal servers, on play give two strength to another uh, random friendly unit. So this is a 1-1 one, one right here. Right? One movement, one uh, attack, or one strength essentially, but then it boosts up. So for three costs, that seems like it's pretty good. And then over here, this is Fort of Ebon Rock. So this is a three cost. It's got four defense or strength, I guess. And, and so this looks like just something that is a blocker. So maybe that's going to buy us some time. Okay, so this one is the Fell Flare Frostlings. So that must be like a faction. And we've got, okay, so faction is neutral, but they're called Frostlings. The rarity is common. And it's got a cost of three. It's got two attack or two strength. Zero movement, so it doesn't move. But on play, it deals two damage to surrounding enemies. So I can see this being useful if you're like trying to build a card advantage in your hand, right? And and you're gonna lay this down as kind of a trap to destroy and disrupt all of your enemies um, in one fell swoop. That that could be pretty valuable. And it still has two strengths, so you can still use it as a blocker. Alright, so that's that's cool. We're gonna go ahead and jump into the next tutorial here as well. I will probably finish this one up. So let's see. Okay, you can replace one of your cards and draw a new one. So this one's expensive. We're going to replace that one. Okay, awesome. So now we can play this gifted recruit. I'm going to play it on the side lanes. Um, earlier you saw like when we're attacking, they can actually block us in that same lane. So I want to be careful about placing my weak units um, on the side so that they can't attack me, right? My stronger units will actually protect them. 
So that's the strategy I'm going with here. All right, so we did two damage. Those Wave Runner dudes are pretty fast. They're kind of like the, the cavalry. And, and so let's see, we've got five mana, so we can drop this right here. It'll do some work, and eliminate them. So we want to keep like a board advantage, but we also want to maintain a card advantage too. So we have to kind of balance that out, I think. So yeah, at the beginning of my turn, my guy advances. Um, these things don't move, so I'm not sure exactly how we use them. Maybe they move one space at the beginning of the turn. I don't know. Um, I'm just going to go ahead and place this because I, I just want to... Use some of my cards. It looks like we still draw. Alright. So let's see what happens. So they got some mice over there. Okay, so they attack sideways as well whenever they place them. You can see they expanded their territory a little bit. We did that one damage there. I'm going to try playing this dude. Okay, and that's two damage. And then this guy right here. My recruit. And I think... The boots are only for that first turn, but they'll they'll still advance um, at the beginning of your yeah. See, they still advance, so there there is the, still the potential to. So that movement that we're seeing is only on the turn that you're playing them. So they will still advance at least one spot each turn. That's that's at least what I'm seeing there. All right, so those men of war are pretty strong, and they've got four right there, so they're just going to destroy the enemy castle. So just like that, we, we've won. Hooray, we won a tutorial against the computer. I think that's definitely the goal objective. So it'll be interesting because I think we're going to get a lot more cards. You can build cards. You can build your deck. We're going to try to wreck face against some opponents and whatnot. And we got, okay, green prototypes on death give one strength to a random surrounding enemy unit and vitalize it. So, okay, I don't know that that's fantastic for us, right? Because you're boosting up, you're making an enemy unit stronger and then vitalize it. I don't know what vitalize it, but I don't like the sound of that. I think it probably means that they can like move again. Okay, call for aid. Spawn four strength units on tiles bordering a target friendly. Okay. So it seems like if we play that right, we can actually generate like four other units that have four strength. Because it says on tiles bordering. Uh, and based off the icon. At, so that, that means that we can have a 12 power. Um, that we, we generate for seven cost. That seems like a pretty good value. And let's see, we got one more card over here. Conflicted Drakes. Okay, so this is a neutral faction rare. On play, do two damage to non-dragon units in front. So I'm not sure what to make of this, if this is just like one line or every unit. It says units in front, so it might be doing everything in the line, like the column in front of it. And if that's the case, that's pretty good. Similar to the fell flares or whatever, they they do damage around them. This does things right in front of the line, so this is good for clearing the line. Um, it says non-dragon, so you could probably build like a dragon deck and use this kind of as a back line, clear everything in front strategy so you may may be mixing dragons with something else i don't know but it sounds like it's got some potential so that's interesting so i like that anything else so no that's it so we're going to go ahead and put in my name over here and then we're going to go ahead and save and continue on with this series so hopefully you guys enjoyed this tutorial video and we'll we'll dive in with more in the future so that's it for me today take care god bless